Hello, welcome to DP Tutorials. In this tutorial, let's see in detail all about activities. I'm selecting this activity and let's discuss in detail this, what is this activity type. Select the activity type according to the activities function in the project and the calendar that should be used for the activity during schedule. To indicate that the activity resources are going to schedule according to the activity calendar, you should be selecting as a task dependent. Most people will be using the task dependent as a default one here. And to indicate that the each activity resources are scheduled according to the resources or calendar, you should be selecting the resource dependent. And if it's duration dependent, then you should be selecting the task dependent. And if it is resource dependent, you should be selecting the resource dependent. And if there are some activities like review meetings, tasks, or other activities which are transformed as a where resources can be used, these can be treated as a level of effort. Examples include the project management tasks, meetings, review meetings. This falls under level of effort. And if it is a start milestone, that is having a junior duration and being a major activity, this will be called as a start milestone. And to indicate that the activity marks the end of a major activity, major stage in the project, you should be selecting the finish milestone. And to indicate the activity duration dependent on the earliest target, latest finish date of the activity, share a common WD level, you should be selecting the WD summary. That's, this is all about activity. If we go to the duration type, we'll be finding these four types fixed duration and units, and this units per time. These two are nothing but this indicate the schedule is a limiting factor in your project. The activity's duration does not change regardless of the number of resources assigned when you modify or update the activities. You usually choose these duration types when you are using task dependent activities. You should be selecting the fixed units per time to indicate the resource availability is the most critical aspect of the project. In this case, the units per time or uh, rate of the reward or resource remains constant. You must use this duration type when you are planning resource dependent activities. Select fixed units to indicate that the budget is a limiting factor. Whenever you use the budget as a limiting factor, you should be using the fixed units. Typically, you will be using this type of type in conjunction with the resource dependent activities. So, this is all about duration type. Go to this percentage complete type. These are three physical types, three types, duration, physical and units. To indicate the activity's percentage complete, percentage complete will be entered by the user for this activity. If it is user provided, it is to be physical. And if the activity's percentage complete be calculated from the original or planned or remaining duration, it should be based by duration. Like out of 10 days, if it is 5 days completed, is nothing but 50 percent has been done. If the activity's percentage complete be calibrated from the actual and remaining units, you should be selecting as the units. And here, activity calendar. This field displays the selected activities calendar. Click the browse button here to select new calendar. And here, WBS. Click on browse the button to assign a new WBS item to the selected activity. And responsible manager. This field displays the name of the responsible manager in the OBS assigned to the selected activities. WBS primary resource. This field displays the name of the selected activities primary resource. Okay. Click on this button and assign the primary resource. So by and let's see how to define the schedule information. Go to the status tab here to view and edit detailed schedule information for the select activity, including start date, finish date, free floats, total floats, constraints, and the durations. This module automatically recalculates the time value and period to enter according to the project calendars. To do this, in the activities window, select the activity to which whose schedule information you want to define. Click the go to the status tab the details tab duration you can mention the duration of the particular activity when you are creating the schedule and enter the original duration of the activity in the original field and enter the remaining duration if the project has already started and enter the new completion estimate a completion estimate when your project when your activity is in progress and in the status here enter the activity's planned start date click the browse button in the start field and then select the date. If the activity has actually started, mark the start date checkbox here, then specify the actual start date in the start field. Enter the plan finish date, click the browse button again, click the browse button again in the finish field and select the date. If the activity is complete, mark the finished checkbox and specify the actual finish date here. And if the selected activity is started and expected finish field displays the 
activity is expected to end. You can enter here. If you have the access to the project, you can edit this date. If the percentage complete type is set to duration, the duration percentage is calculated from the original or planned and remaining durations. Total float is nothing but amount of time the selected activity can be delayed without delaying the project's finish date. Free float is the amount of time that the selected activity can be delayed without delaying the immediate successor of the activities. And coming to constraints here, use this constraints when activities must start or finish on a specific date. Choose the primary constraint for the activity, then click the browse button in the date field to select the date at which the primary constraint applies. Similarly, you can do the secondary constraint. Coming to this labor units, you can assign the demos in the status tab, total the amount of all resources assigned in the resources tab here. The budget of the plan amount is the expected amount of labor units or cost or material cost the selected activities resources will use. The actual will be the number of units that the resources are being used and the remaining will be the remaining amount of units of cost or material cost that will be used. And now let's go to this relationships. Clear relationship between activities to indicate whether an activity can begin only after other activities start or finish. Once you assign the relationship between activities, schedule the project by going here or by keyboard stroke F9. You can schedule the project to calculate early and late dates for the each activity. You can define relationship to activities inside the project or with the other activities in any other project. So there are four types of relationships. Finish to start, go to this activity and click on this assign button and click this. In the relationship you can see this finish to start the successor of the activity can begin only when the predecessor activity completes finish to finish the finish of the successor activity depends on the finish of the predecessor activity start start the start of the successor activity depends on the start of the predecessor activity start to finish the successor activity cannot finish until the predecessor activity starts and here i'm selecting the successor so this is the right here and this is the lag this lag can be positive or negative. Lag is the number of units, time units from the start or finish of an activity to the start or finish of its successor. So, after this preliminary design, I will be giving this a lag of 5 days. Nothing but, after the completion of the preliminary design, it will be taking 5 days and then the RFP activity will be then start. So, this is all about activities and this arrow marks will be displayed. Have relationship lines, but another shortcut for giving the relationships is you can place the cursor here. You can see the hand tool, and if you go to this start or finish, you can see the arrow button. Thereby, you can drag holding the left button of your mouse and place at the front end or back end of the activity. Thereby, you can give the finish to start or finish finish relationships. This is the shortcut where you have where you can use the shortcut and save your time for placing the relationships. With this activity network, you can trace the logic. This with this you can examine the path on how these relationships are going to the front and back. So this is catch up here. Here we can use the codes, codes which are used to categorize activities according to your organization for the units. We can assign the codes which we have already created in the Seen earlier in the other tutorials, you can assign this notebook which provide an additional information that further describes the activities according to specific categories of information. Steps which divide activities into smaller units, you can apply a weightage to each activity. Click on this right click and customer step columns and add the step weight so that you can. Calculate the exact percentage of which the amount of data is. Feedback which allow you, you know, allows you to exchange notes with an activity's primary resource to work from the progress report and module. Uh, WPS blocks which enable you to catalog and track all project related work products and documents. And the expenses which are one time expenditures for non reusable uh, items. You can associate three different cost items with expenses to categorize them. Summary which discusses the detail cost and unit information for the for the selected activity and in the edit tutorials we have seen how to assign the resources and goals for the particular activity. 
Kayak bagil ya. yang follow si khususus A yang beli A beli khususus A beli khusus beli ada juga dia kan pada of course assigning all the resources to all the activities you can go to this uh, project resource assignments and generate the resource sheet and resource codes here we can uh, mention the units of the device Here you can the resources the resources who are working on activity, then also then post to the activity the progress report module. For the resources to read, you can assign uh, notes to activities by these two steps. You can uh, add particular steps and you can save it as the template. These are the basic templates with a set of particular steps. So, if you have the repeating steps for each activity, you can save it as a template and you can use ready made ready for the other activities the same sort of steps and uh, this is all the general information about the activities i hope you understood this video tutorial please do subscribe for more upcoming videos thank you